Well, this is uh, part two of installing a Viking engine without redoing all of the electrical or all of the fuel system. So this one will be pretty much technical and kind of boring, but it will explain what I'm trying to explain. So here's a picture of a little sub panel that we made. <clears throat> it just kind of piggybacks onto a section of the console of the Zenith airplane. It was part of the console that was available for switches and breakers and all the stuff that we show on our website. So we utilized that section, cut a hole in the existing console, <clears throat> made this part on the bench, and it is now... Um, set up so that it can be installed with the same two screws on each side and also to be removed if needed without having to take the whole console out. So this enables us to get the Viking wiring um, recommended uh, for the engine installed without having to redo everything else in the airplane. Now Let's follow along and talk about all the steps that are involved with doing that. This particular picture is showing the pre-made panel and then we're starting to show the installation of one wire at a time. This being one of the wires that is going to engage the contactor. There's a contactor number one for battery one and contactor two for battery two. So the two first switches are going to have two ground wires going to them from our grounding bus, and we'll show where we put the grounding bus. And then two wires that go to the contactor, so when the switch is thrown, it will ground those contactor and, and engage them so we can turn on either battery one or battery two, or both. Now, let's talk about batteries a little bit. Well, this airplane had an O200 in it, so it had a heavy battery in the tail section. Without, or, cons or considering that, and the labor that it would take to relocate that battery to the firewall, and so forth and so on, and also to live with the principle here of that we're trying to install an engine in an airplane that already has a particular fuel system and has a particular electrical system and then work around that. Okay, so that's what we did. We'll show later throughout this movie installing another battery up front, uh, how we utilized what was in the airplane, separated the two for airplane system and engine system and so forth and so on. So let's go. So this shows what I spoke of earlier. We used the existing Zenith console, the top of it, and cut away a section of it with drilling the corners and tin snips and filing a little bit. Then we grabbed another section of console material with the bent lips uh, or edges and installed all of the Viking uh, wiring stuff just as sh is shown on our wiring diagram. We ran all of the wires through the existing console and prepared everything such that we can remove it later, have a little bit of a pigtail there that can be coiled up and actually very easily work on the Viking part of the system, almost like in the seat of the airplane. So this was something that was done to be able to have everything in the panel the same as what it had been before. Uh, we're going to separate out as far as the voltage and current going to the instrument panel and the rest of the airplane and we're going to bring electrical power to our bus here and make sure that it is protected, just like it shows in our wire diagram, by providing a 30-amp 
fuse or breaker for the rest of the airplane and then running the power from the two batteries directly to the engine bus here. And that's obviously in order to keep the engine running if something is shorting out or something is going haywire with the rest of the airplane, like the lights and the avionics and all that stuff. So we give 30 amps for that and the rest is for the engine or actually the other way around. The engine is prioritized and then we tee off of that and give some power, protected power to the airframe. So on the firewall shelf here, we had two old cruddy looking contactors. One was a contactor just to turn power on from the master switch, the traditional red dual master switch that you find in a Connell or Lycoming or traditional airplane installation to turn the, the alternator or generator on and then the magnetos. Uh, and the other one, there was another contactor, was an engine starting contactor. So those were removed and new units were put in place of them. In this case, one had its positive cable coming in that was already in the airplane from the rear mounted battery. And then the ground cable also came all the way from the back of the airplane and it was solidly grounded to the airframe on the firewall and then will be grounded to the engine. Then we added another contactors right next to it and that clearly is shown on our wire diagram how to do a dual battery system. So then we added another battery to the firewall and we wired the positive of that battery to the second contactor. And then we started doing the traditional things that we do using our wire diagram by adding the diodes to prevent spikes through the contactors when they close. We uh, join the outputs of the contactors together so we can use one battery, the other battery, or both when we tee off power. And then we started running ground wires to our ground bus and also to each of the contactors for the two first switches in our power panel that we saw a little while ago and that was kind of the beginning of the wiring now we're going to finally or we're going to follow along and see step by step how we converted the original wiring to this dual battery one so far we've taken the first battery that was in the airplane and used it for the first contactor and we've added a battery as we can see here and we wire that to the second contactor. We also added a ground bus to the firewall and we were able to ground the second battery to that. All right, so now with two contactors, two batteries, one that was existing and uh, a ground bus, we have some of the, and we have our own switch panel. We now have the things in the airplane that is gonna enable us to wire the things that we want to wire to run the engine. And we're going to make sure that we protect ourselves from the rest of the airplane. Here we see the two contactors on the, on the output side have been joined. And <clears throat> we're now running two wires from here, 12 gauge wires. One goes to supply the aircraft through a 30 amp breaker. The other one goes to the uh, Viking wire bus that we saw earlier and powers that up. So we're able to split the two right here and have that protection. Here you see one of those 12 gauge wires coming in from the contactor and it goes right to the power bus on the Viking um, power panel. On the left, you see protected breakers that supply power to things like fuel pumps and alternator and so forth. On the right, you do see we tee off and we power another breaker for the heater that we also ended up installing on here. But that is protected through the heater breaker, a five amp breaker.
the other wire from the contactors went right to this 20 or 30 amp breaker and it is now set up so that it just powers the original part of the airplane so we can maintain that it it uh, powers a power bus which powers a avionics bus and so forth and so on so now when we have prepared ourselves meaning we have our own power panel we have our own contactors we have two switches that can ground the contactors to turn them on or off we now have something that can be powered up and used as uh, testing the rest of the equipment so we move on to wire the two fuel pumps so we already have a grounding bus out on the airplane uh, at the front we have grounding buses other places in the airplane but we elected not to use them because we want to keep our engine stuff organized and by itself um, there were a lot of weird grounding in this airplane in my opinion there were bolts through the avionics trays that that had some grounds there were there was just grounds everywhere like on little studs that were stuck in different places now so we want to stay organized of everything that's engine related because we want to be able to troubleshoot later on if there is an issue of any sort so here we can see the one of the two fuel pumps it's clearly marked positive and negative two of the wires are negative so each of them is separately routed through the firewall to our grounding bus on the shelf of the zenith airplane and then the other two wires are routed through the uh, hole in the console and right into our power panel one for one switch and one for the other switch to be able to turn the pumps on and off here we're taking a small exception to the rule about splicing wires we usually just use terminal strips but in this entire installation there was just two wires that needed to be spliced these are the fuel pump wires and we decided that the ground side of the fuel pump wires that it was worthwhile doing a proper splice to get the grounds through the firewall and up to the grounding bus as you can see we're not using a type of a butt splice where there's insulation and you can't really see how you're doing things we're using what's called a parallel splice or an overlapping splice where both wires go in through a barrel and they lay next to each other and then a special tool is used to crimp them and then heat shrunk so we can rely on the splice a hundred percent and not through some kind of a chintzy automotive um, butt splice where one wire goes into a hole and the other goes opposite and you have no idea if you really get a good connection or not so we're basically trying to stay organized and working our way down the switch row on our panel uh, we did the two contactors there were four grounds two go to ground and two go to the contactors and the switches engage the contactors here we have extended the fuel pump ground wires and we're attaching those here we see the two black wires going into the uh, fast on terminals for uh, fuel pump one and fuel pump two the power to them and of course the power is coming from the breaker that's right next to it which is powered by the bus all right we're going to jump a little bit um, we're also working in parallel with the wiring to the on the fuel system because as you recall the header tank is right here in the console as well now we decided there's not really enough room to have the pre-filters in that same area nor would it be easy to change and so forth and so on so we decided since the large fuel hoses are coming down in the pillars behind the seats on the left and the right and then underneath the floorboards into the center section we're going to make access panels and uh, put the 3 8 barbed filters in these access areas so that it'll be super easy to replace them during the 
uh, condition inspection every year. As you can see, we got a, a large uh, hole saw. We're gonna cut some holes and we'll show how to put the filters in. All right, step one, uh, clear all the stringers and drill a hole on the left and drill a hole on the right. Locate the 3 8 fuel line, clamp off each side with vice grips or fuel. Uh, they make uh, pliers for that too to clamp off hoses. Install the filters, put the clamps on, and now we're at the point where we can remove uh, any kind of clamp to keep fuel from flowing and testing the fuel. And as soon as we opened it up and we popped the uh, vent underneath, fuel started gushing out. So we had no problem with flow. We tried two pumps together. We tried one pump, we tried the other pump. Anything, everything was just absolutely perfect as far as fuel flow to that area. All right, here's a clear overview of some of the work that was done. Um, we talked about in the last video, the mechanical fitting of the header tank in the console going through the floor and that worked out really well. You can see the rudder cables here are, is above everything that we're doing. Um, we'd already cut the 3 h lines for a different purpose. We were going to do some filters and stuff in here. Decided that was not the way to go. We already showed the filters go behind the seats underneath those covers. <clears throat> so we ended up with some stainless steel uh, 3 h to 5 16 um, reductions here and then a short piece of 5 16 hose into the fuel tanks but this could also be done with 3 8 holes uh, hose right to the fuel tank from the left and from the right so that part worked out really really well we did have to extend the fitting slightly from the tank to clear the screws on the pumps but that was also very easy you also see the so those are the two hoses coming from the left to the right, to the middle of the tank, into those brass fittings. Those are the feed lines from the left and the right fuel tank of the airplane. <clears throat> we also see the connectors, the black connectors with two wires each that powers the pumps. We talked about that earlier. The two grounds go to our grounding bus uh, up front, and the positives each go to a switch in order to be able to turn the pumps on. So again, um, I think this is a, a nice way to take an existing airplane and make it work with a Viking engine that has a little sub electrical panel and a small fuel pump module and make that blend into an existing installation. Here you can clearly see what I talked about earlier, <clears throat> cutting a hole in the existing console without having to rework the console. It already has the same screw holes. All the work that was done there is still the same. And we drop in the electrical part of it, making sure that every wire is routed through the original opening and then everything can be put together. And the console doesn't even have to be removed to work on this in the future if any uh, maintenance need, is needed to be done to the wiring. And back to our grounding bus, we see that we have grounds coming in to ground this bus to another bus. We have the main, um, the backup battery being grounded. We have two grounds, one for each contactor that goes through the switch and we have grounds, one for each fuel pump coming to our bus. And, and we've also spent some time before even mounting the engine to prep everything for the engine. The red wire here or the cable is for the starter that's ready to go. We have some ground straps for the engine that are ready. We have the fuel system uh, ready, basically the last filter and ready to put the hose to the engine. More tomorrow.